Hello my crafty friends, welcome to Repurpose My Way, I'm Shelly. Today we're going to be working with an IOD mold. I pampered myself and bought one of these. I saw it in a local thrift store or a flea market, it wasn't a thrift store. But uh, it's got a cow, sheep, and a pig on it and we're going to use each one of those today on the three projects and then we will have a fourth project that's just all on its own that I just felt like doing. So let's get started. So we're going to work on this milk uh, pitcher here, or this water pitcher. Uh, I did worked on this last, um, I guess, spring, and I put a lavender napkin on there and decorated it all up, and it never sold in my booth. I was kind of surprised. So I decided that I was going to bring it home and try something different and see if it would sell if I did a different kind of farmhouse design instead of with the white. So I'm going to use, of course, the cow, and I'm going to make a mold out of the cow, and I'm going to add that to my pitcher. So I'm going to use E6000 to put the glue on, and I'm going to spread it around with a skewer because that's what I had handy. And I'm just going to put it over that lavender picture that I had kind of in the middle of the the pitcher and I'm going to use my Kills chalk paint. I got this on discount at Walmart. It's called Platinum Ring. It's kind of a uh, light gray color with a blue tint to it. So it's very pretty and it's very farmhouse color. So I'm thinking this is going to look good, I hope. So I'm just covering it all over with the paint. And I do co two coats on this to make sure that I get it in all the crevices of the cow and uh, all over. So I also am using some uh, clear wax. It's got a little tint of white to it because uh, I mixed it for something else, but it is just basically clear wax. And I'm doing this all over the pitcher so that it seals in nicely. And then I'll let it sit for a few minutes and then I'm going to turn around and rub it back off and get that gloss off there. So I took a little bit of white uh, pla or plaster paint, I guess it's off white, and I dry brushed around the whole picture. I guess I lost footage. This whole video is me losing footage for some reason or forgetting to hit play. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> I dry brushed the whole picture and then I took a little bit of antique wax and went over the cow and then wiped it back uh, just to give him a little brown color so he'll stand out a little bit. And I really like the looks of it so I decided to add some to the edges of the picture as well so that it would look kind of like it was rusted around the edges. I did all the seams and um, the handle and the bottom so it looks pretty cool I think and then once I got it done all the way around I just took and wiped it back with um, a rag just so that it wasn't so bright brown color or such a bright brown color so after going all the way around that it's all done and I give it a quick spray of clear spray paint and or sealer and now I'm going to style it for you So this is a pie plate that I got from a local uh, yard sale and I decided to pick it up. It was very inexpensive and it's been used quite often, I could tell. And it's kind of a thick, heavy 
pie plate. So I wanted to do some decor with it and decided to paint it with the plaster Waverly chalk paint. And I have this decoupage paper that I recently got from Zazzle. So I just cut around it and some of the little wispy parts of the wreath I took and cut in and out of those so that they would go up the sides of the pie plate. And I'm ju I just cut that small enough so that it would sit right down inside there. Now I noticed that the that bottom part where I'm snipping where the flowers are was wrinkling when I put it on there so I snipped it just a little bit so that they would kind of overlap and not wrinkle they would lay flatly on that plate. So I added Mod Podge, a thin coat of Mod Podge and then I'm just laying my um, decoupage paper down onto it. I had gone up the sides as well with the Mod Podge so that those little small wispy parts would go right up there and stick. And then I'm just working out some of the wrinkles and I'll go over the whole plate with another coat of Mod Podge to seal it in. So I'm going to take some plaster paint. I have just a little bit left in this jar or I would pour it out and I'm just going to add a little bit of baking soda to it to thicken it up. I'm going to stipple some paint around the edges to get rid of the edge of that um, decoupage paper and just give it some texture as well. So I'll go up on the lip too to uh, give it that bumpy texture. And this is why, because I'm taking my Waverly Antique Wax and I'm going over the whole plate and then it will um, kind of stick and go down in the, um, kind of go over the bumps and go down in some of the crevices of the stippling that I did. Now before I did the very bottom, I wanted to wipe back the edges and see what it looked like and if I was happy with uh, how it was coming out. And I really like it and I know on the video it looks like it really looks really good with the edges done and not the middle, but really in person I didn't think it looked all that great. So I took the rest of my antique wax that I had and I did the middle as well. Um, it just didn't quite blend in as well as I liked it to. So I'm just going to put that all on there and then again wipe it all back. And now I think it looks really cool. This looks like a real uh, fall piece, something that you could have out in the fall. So I really like it. Um, I also had these letters, these are rub-on letters, and I wrote out hello, obviously. And I'm just going over it with a little bit of the plaster paint over the top to get rid of, they're a little bit shiny. So I did that and then I took some antique wax over that to blend it in. Going to move on to the sheep. I'm going to put the uh, some clay, the rest of my clay actually. This is the very last of my clay that I purchased from Amazon and I'll put a link in the description. So I've never used these IOD molds before. I'm so used to purchasing from Walmart and Amazon, just the inexpensive ones, finding them at Michael's. But the detail in these, and they're so thick, the wells of them are so thick, and it just is really nice to be able to pick it up and have it not feel like it's going to fall apart. But I really love the detail in the sheep. Uh, you can even see the little wavy fur, or I guess is what it is, what it's called they have. Uh, but it really is pretty awesome. So when I'm pushing it down on this picture frame that I had from my stash, I was very careful not to get rid of a lot of the detail that was on there. It was very gentle in pushing it on there. So I painted the whole picture frame in the Waverly chalk paint, the color moss, and I did everything including the sheep because I'm going to go back over it. Now I got a little ahead of myself on this. I was using the uh, plaster paint 
in Waverly and doing a dry brush over the top. But I had thought that what I wanted to do was wet distress first over the edges and the corners where the kind of the gold color was. I thought that would look really nice coming through, just peeking through the green. So after I got done dry brushing, I went, oh yeah, I was going to uh, wet distress. So I went back and did that and pretty much wiped off all of my plaster paint that I put on, but that's okay. So now I'm going back through and doing a dry brush of the plaster paint, which is covering up some of the distress that I did, but it's also, you can see spots here and there that come out from it. So I think it looks really cool. And then I'm going to just do a deeper, uh, more heavier color on the sheep. So you're going to have a white sheep in the middle of your picture frame. And I think this came out really good. I, it's really uh, cute and simple, and it adds so much to this project. on this clay mold of the pig with some of the little bunches of flowers and some of this DAS DAS I don't know how you pronounce it uh, clay and I'm going to be using that uh, to do my next project so up, up in the corner there I have a tray that I got out of my stash I've had it for a long time I don't know where it came from but I have it and I'm going to do something fun with it. So I hope you like it. So just popped out this cute little pig. Again, the detail is just so great with these IOD molds. And now I'm going to do the little bunches of flowers. I'm going to do both of them. There's one that goes one way and one that goes the other way and uh, kind of mirror each other. And I'm just going to pop the clay in there and get those out. So I'm going to set those aside and let them harden a little bit and just paint this tray up and this is going to be an all black tray so I'm giving it a, I gave it two coats of the black paint all the way around top and bottom. Now while that dries I'm taking my mushroom folk art paint and I'm going to paint the pig and the two bunches of flowers. And then I'm going to wipe my brush off and dry brush a little bit of the paint on the bottom of the tray. So I'm going to get out my uh, Old Crooked River Seed Company stencil. It's right here. And I have a clear piece over the part I don't want to stick to my tray. Uh, so I just want the top part to stick just above the crow's and the rest of it is going to be open so that I can put my little pig on there. If you're interested in this stencil, I will have down in the description below the link to Instagram to Tracy and Dan's uh, page or way to contact them so that you can go ahead and order one of these. I have this size and I have a larger size. I can't remember off the top of my head what size it is, but I'm sure Tracy would know. She's right on top of things. These people are super nice and great to work with, and I know that you will love this stencil. So that peeled right off. Make sure that when you get done with your stencil, you wash it immediately. As I was editing this video, I realized that I did not wash mine, so it had dried on a little bit. I ran it under some warm water in a little tub and let it soak for a few minutes, and it came right off with a little bit of wiping with a rag and the sticky you know once it dries the sticky comes back on the back and it works really good so just adding some e6000 on the back of my little piggy 
and also onto the flowers that are going to go on the tray as well. Now again, I don't push hard on this because I don't want to lose the detail in the little pig, but I do want it to stick really well. So just use my skewer to kind of smush around that glue to get it on the edges and in all the little spots that stick out so that it just glues down and sticks really, really well. I add another little coat of mushroom paint on the pig and the flowers and a little bit of black over the letters to, of the stencil to distress them a little bit and then I go over the pig and the flowers with a little bit of black as well. Just a dry brush gently over it to uh, make those blend in well with the rest of the picture. And then once I'm done, I just sand down the edges a little bit to make it look a little more distressed and give it a Rust-Oleum clear flat spray uh, to seal it in. Thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. These projects will be up on my Etsy shop, which is down in the description in the next few days. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And let me know down in the comments which one's your favorite. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye bye.